This is part 89 of C-sharp tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the purpose of parameterized thread star delegate. This is continuation to part 88, so please watch part 88 before proceeding. So, when do we use this parameterized thread star delegate? Use this delegate if you want to pass data to the thread function. Let's understand this with an example. Let's flip to Visual Studio. This is the same example that we worked with in the previous session. At the moment, this program is always going to print numbers from 1 till 10. Now let's say we want to control this target number. We want to change this program in such a way that we want it to prompt the user to enter a target number. And if the enter, end user enters number 30 as the target number, then we want this program to print numbers from 1 till 30. Now to be able to control the target number, we need to pass a parameter to this function. So let's go ahead and pass it a parameter. Let's call it target. And within the for loop, we are going to check the value of i against this target variable. So that's going to do the trick for us. But then notice that the moment we have changed the signature of this function, we got a compiler error here. And why do we got that compiler error? That's because if you look at this thread class constructor, there are four overloaded versions. But basically, you know, a thread needs to point to a function, you know, which we want the thread to execute. And there are two ways we can do that. One way is to use thread start delegate. We discussed using that in the previous session. And another way is to use parameterized thread start delegate. Now, what's the difference between the two? When do we use one over the other? Now, if you want to pass some data to the thread function, here print numbers is the thread function because this thread is going to execute that function. So, and it is expecting a parameter to be passed in. So obviously we need to pass some data to this thread function. So if the thread function expects some data to be passed, then use parameterized thread start delegate. If you don't have any data to pass to the thread function, then use thread start delegate. So let's go ahead and create an instance of parameterized thread start delegate. Let's call it parameterized thread start equals new parameterized thread start. And what is a delegate? A delegate is a function pointer. It points to a function. And for a delegate to be able to do that to its constructor, we need to pass the name of the function. And the name of the function is print numbers. All right, so we have an instance of our parameterized thread start delegate. Let's go ahead and pass it to the constructor of the thread class. Notice that we got rid of that compiler error, but here we still have a compiler error. And what is the error saying? No overload for print numbers matches delegate parameterized thread start. Let's look at the signature of parameterized thread start delegate. Look at that, it returns void and it expects a parameter of type object. Now, let's look at the signature of the function to which this delegate is pointing to. Print numbers, it returns void, and look at the parameter, it is of type integer. So the signature of this function does not match the signature of this delegate. So obviously, that's why we have this compiler error. And why is that? Because delegates are type safe function pointers meaning the signature of the delegate must match with the signature of the delegate with which i mean to which it is pointing to in this case they don't match and that's why we have that compiler error so to get rid of this compiler error we need to change the data type of this parameter to object and the moment we do that notice that the compiler error goes away but then we need to fix it here because i is going to be an integer so we need to typecast that to integer. So let's create a variable of type int here. Let's call it number and initialize that to zero. And then let's use try parse function to convert this object type into an integer. So try parse expects that to be in a string format. So let's convert that to a string. And then we need to pass it an output parameter and let's pass this variable that we have created, number. Now look at this try parse function. It's going to return true if the conversion is successful. Otherwise, it's going to return false. So if the conversion is successful, then go ahead and print the numbers. And 
you know if the conversion is successful this variable is going to receive the converted value so i is less than or equal to number go ahead and print it now all that is left is to get the target number from the end user so let's use console dot right line and let's prompt the user to enter the target number and let's read the value that the user has entered using console dot read line function and then let's store it in a variable of type object let's call it target and now the important thing is to pass this argument to this function okay so how do we do that you know just pass that to the start function and we are calling this start function on the thread object so this thread is pointing to this function so that value gets automatically passed down to this function okay so if you look at the start function itself on the thread object you know that's an instance method um, there are two overloaded versions one overloaded ver version doesn't take any parameters the other one expects a parameter of type object and this target is of type object so we are passing it there that gets passed down to the print numbers function so let's quickly run this and see if it works as expected so please enter the target number let's enter for example 14 and look at that it's printing numbers 1 till 14 okay so when do we use this parameterized thread start delegate use it if you want to pass data to the thread function now we can also change the code in the main function like this if you look at the code at the moment you know we are explicitly creating an instance of parameterized thread start delegate making it point to a function and then we are passing that delegate instance to the thread class constructor do we really have to write this line of code here not really we can just copy this paste it right there and get rid of this delegate altogether let's go ahead and run this so please enter the target number let's enter maybe 30 and look at that it prints numbers 1 till 30 so it's working so now here we are not explicitly creating the parameterized thread start delegate um, but how is it working it's working because the compiler implicitly does the conversion for us automatically from this to this one okay so that's what we have there new thread of number dot print numbers the compiler is going to do the implicit conversion for us you know to this syntax so the obvious question is when to use parameterized thread start delegate over thread start delegate if you have some data that you want to pass down to the thread function then use parameterized thread start otherwise use thread start delegate so one thing to keep in mind is that using parameterized thread start delegate and thread dot start method to pass data to the thread function is not save uh, type safe as they operate on object data type look at that you know the start method it expects a parameter of type object so meaning you can pass any type of data to this function okay and it's still uh, going to work but then the problem is we lose this type safety that we get with c-sharp programming as a result of that okay but now you may think okay here we are operating on object data type now I can easily change this to int data type but the moment we do that we have seen we get a compiler error why is that that's because the signature of this function doesn't match the signature of parameterized thread start delegate that's the reason we get that compiler error right so this is not really a good practice to use parameterized thread start delegate um, to pass data to the thread function because we lose that um, C sharp type safety the programming language feature so in our next video we'll actually discuss passing data to the thread function without losing that type safety feature of the C sharp programming language that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day